Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. And boy, do I have some findings for you today. I have a haul video. This is an Amazon order that I recently placed, and I thought I would show you some of the goodies I got. So here is my whole order. Uh, I'm not going to show you unboxing it because it came in a rather large box and also a lot of these things came if you order things from Amazon you know they come in individual packages so I think my order ended up being like five or six different packages so I'll just have it here for you and I want to say thank you so much to my patrons those of you who have supported me on Patreon made this order possible. Because of your financial support, I was able to order these things and I'll be able to use them and then show them to you in the future. So let's get started. What have we got? Well, one of the things I was very excited about was this. I got some more Lisa Pavelka Poly Bonder. I've fallen in love with this stuff. And I also got a, a little stand for it. Now I saw Lisa using her Poly Bonder with the stand and said, oh, that's silly and unnecessary. And then I started using the poly bonder and said, oh, that's not silly and unnecessary. That's brilliant because I can't tell you how many times I've knocked over my bottle of poly bonder. If it was a thinner liquid, I would have spilled it all a dozen times or more. And so this just fits in there. And I think you can... I think... Oh, see, that's brilliant. You stuff it down there, and then you can hold it, and then you can use it with one hand instead of having to use another hand to steady it. I'm liking that. And I need to do a Friday Findings video on Poly Bonder, so maybe that'll be coming up sometime soon. I need to make a note of that. So this I'm excited about using. And then uh, if you've been following my blog or my Instagram, or even watching the videos on YouTube, you know that I've challenged myself to sculpt a figure two every month for 2017. So I figured if I was going to be doing that, I was going to need a lot of flesh tone polymer clay. And this is a really nice quality. I've used it before and I'm very happy with it. It doesn't get so soft as some others. It's just got a nice look for skin. And of course you can mix in other colors to get various skin tones. If you've seen my dolls so far, they all do have slightly different skin tones because don't we all? So this'll, I don't know if this'll last me the year, but it'll last uh, several figures anyways. Ah, and these, okay. These technically are not a gift for me, but they sort of are. This is a, a set of headphones. I don't know if I can open it and show them to you. Because this is actually a birthday gift from my son. But it's a gift for me. Let's see, can I open this without wrecking the box? Well, you just have to take my word for it. There is a set of on-ear headphones in here, as the package says. They were highly recommended. They weren't very expensive, like $15. But everybody said they were really good headphones for the money which is good because my son is hard on electronics. Case in point, the last headphones I got him, he has broken off the little foam piece over that goes over the ears. He works in the room next to mine, and every time he listens to something, I hear bzz, 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 bzz. It's really annoying. I'm one of those people that if you're doing this, I find it irritating. Little noises irritate me. They kind of make me crazy. My husband told me I needed to get over it, but still get him headphones for his birthday. So, so this will save my sanity a little and hopefully be a nice gift for him. Ah, epoxy sculpt. I have been wanting to try this for ages. So this is a two-part, like a two-part epoxy that is a glue. It's kind of like a glue meets clay. You mix the two parts together like you would in an epoxy, but then you can you have some time to sculpt with it. In the 2016 Polymer Clay Adventure, Marlene Brady had a class where she made a fairy garden teapot. Some of you may have seen this teapot I picked up. Boy, it's dusty. It's been a while since I bought it. I haven't gotten to this project. She used epoxy sculpt on a teapot that she found at um, Salvation Army. I think I got this, yeah, I think it was $1.99. And it was just so cute. And I thought of doing it a different way, but I decided to try her way. 
So I'm going to use the epoxy sculpt and then it's kind of a grayish white and then when you're done you paint it. So that'll be a fun project to make in my spare time. <laughs> and there are lots of other things you can do with this. Now here's an interesting thing. I have seen quite a few sculptors who sculpt in miniature using these as tools. Now I don't know why I didn't get the handle, but April at Creating Fairies, she made her own handle out of polymer clay and then attached the little tool to the end with epoxy sculpt. And I said, well, gee, why did she do that? Why don't I just um, put it, you know, make a handle. This is just some leftover clay sheet and I wrapped it around a piece of wire, made myself a handle, stuck on <laughs> my stimulator and stuck it in the oven. And uh, oh, that's why she used epoxy sculpt. Okay, they melt. I don't know why. I ended up ordering two packages of these. Uh, so I have some to you know, I thought it might melt. So I'll have to cut this off, put another one on, and then, yeah, attach it with something that doesn't go in the oven. But I think this is going to be a really nice... Oh, that's right. She said she made her own tool because she really didn't like the bend in it. She liked being able to hold it like a pencil and have it more straight. So that's why she doesn't, doesn't use the little angled tool. So it's kind of firm but flexible and very, very pointy. Uh, it's quite a finely tapered point, and I can see that being really helpful in sculpting figures and faces and fingers and hands and all kinds of things. So I'm looking forward to finishing this properly and having this tool to use. Oh, and then more Pardo translucent clay because it really is the best translucent clay out there. It doesn't turn yellow. Every time I used Primo, it turned a nasty yellow on me. It made me so disappointed. I had pretty blue projects that ended up green because the transparent turned yellow. Now, this stuff is a little bit tricky to condition and work with. And Ginger Davis Almond at the Blue Bottle Tree did a great article on conditioning Pardo, and I'll have a link to that on my blog. It's helped me so much whenever I work with it to keep her tips in mind. Oh, and these. This is what a hundred of something looks like. These are pipettes. And I got them to use with Pebios. Now, I wasn't ever going to use these. Uh, some people suggested it. I'll open it so you can see what they look like. Some people had suggested using these with Pebios. I suppose if you're going to use a lot, they would be good, but I tend to just do small jewelry pieces. I was glad to hear another artist echo what I had thought, that rather than having to mess with these, uh, you, there's no way you're going to clean them, so they're definitely disposable. She just uses a popsicle stick or a skewer and, and then drips the paints off of the stick or the skewer into her project. But these were like four dollars and I thought I would just give them a try. And if you want to learn more about Pebios, I have a video about those as well. And I have picked up, since I made that video, I've picked up more colors and have a strong desire to play with them further. Well, and this is just some uh, 20 gauge wire that's colored antique brass. So many times I don't really want the bright gold. I want it a little bit more antiqued. I just thought that would be good for wire wrapping. Now these are kind of unexpected. Not my usual colors. <laughs> kind of a screaming pink. I mean, it says that they're dark rose. I don't know. Would you call that color dark rose? Like I said, I call it screaming pink. <laughs> <laughs> and my plan was to make a bracelet using these. I guess it goes well with those, but it's so not my colors. These vitriol tila beads and make another wavy bracelet. But I am so not in love with this pink color. I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. I may just go ahead and make the bracelet just because I have them, right? I don't know. I may have to order a different color to kind of maybe tone them down a little. <laughs> it's just, you know, I lived through fluorescence once in the 80s. They've come back in the 2010s. Uh, <laughs> and I haven't liked, I didn't like them either time. So that's the way it goes when you order things online sometimes. Oh, and this I am excited about. Actually, these I am excited about. Ah. You may recognize the non-stick craft sheet, but this is actually a package of three. Yeah, one, two, three, for like 12 bucks. I was so excited. 
Uh, my Ranger craft sheet is an absolute wreck. It is so stained. It's got holes in it. It's just a mess. I do pull it out when I paint. So these I think are 16 by 20. I'm going to keep one hole. And then there's been so many times when I've wished I could cut mine up and have little pieces that were non-stick for baking things on, for creating things so that like sheets and things that were non-stick. There's just been times when I wished I had more than one, but the Ranger ones at the stores were kind of pricey to be cutting them up. So I was really happy to find these. Uh, like I said, one I'll keep whole and the others I'll probably cut into various sizes to use in different ways. 18 by 20. And then finally I have some size 15 seed beads. Because when I was making the Super Duo Donut, Super Duper Donut Pendants, I had a really hard time finding 15s at my local craft stores. Nobody had them. I have a few. I don't know where I got them. But nowadays the local craft stores don't carry any. And I just love that pattern for some reason and want to make some more. And these little bitty seed beads are great for adding to things. They're just smaller than ones that you, that you would find at your regular craft store. And so that's it. That is my Amazon haul. And now that I've shown it all to you, I can let it all be absorbed into my craft space. And I will have links to all of these things uh, at my blog. You can click on the little eye that's in the upper right, or it might be a tag, or the link in the description box. And that will bring you to my blog post where I will have links to all of these things. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it's maybe given you some ideas and inspirations. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Take a look at my Patreon page if you would like to be one of the people that helps out an artist that helps out with these tutorials so that I can show you more things and keep these videos free for everybody. Happy creating. Bye-bye.